Welcome back. In the previous video, we went over storage accounts. Kind of just get a, did a little overview of what storage accounts are, what they can do, different types of things. And we created a basic uh, blob blob storage. Um, so let's let's expand on that. So right now we're just going to go over the uh, one type of the storage possibilities in the storage accounts, which is which is blob storage. So what blob storage is is basically it's it's object storage. And it can just store unstructured data of anything like text, binary data, images, database backups, videos, uh, and so forth. And all of this storage is accessible through a public URL if you want. You can also you can make the URL private so not everybody can access it. Or you can allow certain people to access it depending on, on what permissions you give it. And when you store it in blob storage... Uh, when your, your your data is encrypted at rest by default, uh, so you can be you can ensure that your your data is secure. All right, so let, let's just get right into it. So this is our existing storage account that we have. Why is that? So let's let's browse through some of this. So let's let's go to our containers. So we already have a couple of containers that we, that we've done. Um, so let's click foobar. So we have we already have an uh, image here. So, so let's click. So if we click on this, we can get the we can get the actual URL for the image. So let's copy it. If we copy this URL, we should be able to view it in our browser, and we can. So now, literally anybody in the world right now can just go to this URL and get this image or this file or, or just whatever or the text data, whatever it is, database backups. They could they can just they can get this. So it's, it's fully public. So one way to secure that is, you know, let's go back to our, our containers and let's, let's change the change access level to, um, or it is private. Oh, we, at, what did we do? Oh, okay. So it wasn't, I think that's actually a bug in Azure. When you do this, it looks like it doesn't, when you do the change access level, it actually doesn't default to what it actually is, which is really confusing. Um, but you can see here now it's private. So I, I don't think we can view this now. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So we can't view this now. So that's actually like a bug in Azure that like, so you see how it says private, but if I change this to container, click okay. You know, naturally I would think that this would you know, when I pull this up, it would default to what was selected here. But it does now. All right, that's weird. Either way, it works. Um, that's fine. But you can see how, you know, public access level to container. So now um, the public has access to all the container information and, and the blob information. But you can see the BAS is, is not. The BAS is, is protected um, through private. So you can't access any resources inside of Baz. So let's go to Baz. So let's 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 do do a few things. So let's let's say we I don't know let's let's say we were storing database backups or something like that. So one thing with with Blob Storage is there's no file system, so you don't have directories, which which is kind of odd and or not really odd, but you can it's just it just it doesn't seem natural. Um, so, so it's basically just a flat file system. So you basically just have your, your containers here and then a big long list of, of your, um, file system. Uh, but the one way you, you can actually get around that is you can do virtual directories that can kind of mimic a regular file system and directory structure. It's not that, but it's just, it's a flat, flat file system, but it's the way it's named is, allows you to do a virtual file system. So let's, let me show you how you do that. First, let's, we're in, we're in, um, we're in the bar container. So let's upload just some, some file for now, just so make a point, let's just do Azure 19. And then let's just choose upload. So we have it. Perfect. So now Baz has Azure 19 in there. All right. So maybe we wanted to store like, I don't know, something like old files or something. Let's just store 
Azure 19. Uh, you can see these are kind of my, my thumbnails for the YouTube videos on some of them. Um, but you can see the advanced here. So the advanced has uh, a different type of blob. So in, in blob storage, you actually have a block blob, a page blob, and a append blob. So the append blob is um, is good for like logging files, so it just appends. So if you're just constantly writing data, those are good for append blocks for that. Uh, block blob is just like your default. All just store a bunch of just you know whatever kitchen sink data. Just throw throw all your data in the block blob. Uh, page blob is for like uh, virtual machines, like the actual your VMs, your virtual machines are actually backed by by page blob. Uh, we're going to default to the to the block blob. Um, that. And then, let's see, the access tier. So you can do the access tier as well. So you have hot, cool, or archive. And like I said in the previous video, you know, if, if you're going to access your data frequently, you're going to want to use hot. If you're going to access it, access it infrequently, but sometimes, cool is good. But And if you want to access it, like, pretty much never, and but you just need a backup just in case, do archive. Archive is drastically cheaper than everything else. Um, but here it says upload to folder. But if you remember, I just said that you uh, blob storage doesn't have folders, but it has the virtual folders. So we can mimic the folder here. So let's just say like old files. So now what this will do is it'll look like it creates a directory. So let's upload. Perfect. So you see how it has the, the folder icon even, you know, and then we open it. And now we have our, our our file. So, and then you can even see how it kind of has a, a file structure here. You know, it's not a true folder structure system. You know, it's still a flat system, but it just, Azure is smart enough to know how to parse that out. So it's, um, it's just a flat file system, but it can mimic that directory structure, which is nice. Um, so you kind of do have your directory structures. It's just not a real true directory structure. And you can see that by two is let, let's upload another full, uh, file. So let's do this, go to advanced. Um, let's actually leave that check now. Uh, let's see, upload a folder. So now you see how it's not like a drop down or I can't just select the folder. That's because it's a virtual folder. So old. So if we do that, if we do old files and it sees old files, it's going to upload to that directory. Um, oh, we're in. Oh, wait, no, it's gonna, we were already inside of, we were in the, in the wrong folder. So go here let's delete this and see you see how it actually won't let you delete a uh, a directory because it's actually not a directory so I checked here you think it would let you delete that but it doesn't so now let's delete this we don't have any snapshots I'll go over snapshots in just a sec can't delete that and let's go back to Old files. So now we're in back in old files, and you can see that that other directory didn't exist. You know, we didn't actually delete the directory. We just deleted the file, and then Azure knew once there were no files, it deleted the directory. All right. So now we're in old files again. So now if we upload, it should store it in old files. Good. Oh no, so we're already in the, my mistake. So we're already in there, so it, it should already automatically upload it to old files. Yeah, perfect. So since we're already in that virtual directory right now, we don't need to upload it to a folder, but if we did, we get what we had last time, we get the duplicate. Um, perfect. All right, so, that, so that's, that's virtual files and all that. So another thing you might see is, that's nice is, um, Lifecycle policies. 
So let's let's find the life cycle policies. Where is our All right, here we go. Life cycle management. So you see how we are, we're back into the the main overview. And we have life cycle management. And what life cycle management does is it allows um, Azure to automatically move things from the hot tier, which is more expensive, to a, a, a lower, colder tier automatically after certain thresholds. So you can you, so you basically like it's like all right if you haven't touched this file in 15, 15 days, let's move it to cold storage. You know, let's save some money. Who doesn't want to save money? All right, so let's add a rule. So let's just say you know after fourteen days or something, um, you can just you can move it to whatever or add name or whatever you want depending on your needs. So then you have move blob to cool storage days after last modification. So if we uploaded it today and we wanted, you know, in 14 days, let's say, you know, after 14 days, let's let's move it from hot storage to cool storage. So this will do that. And then you can also do move it to archive storage or you can also delete it if you haven't used it in X number of days. So these lifecycle policies, all lifecycle management, is very, uh, uh, very important in my opinion because I would always set these almost all the time, depending on what you need. Because this just allows you to uh, clean up your data and make sure that you're getting, you're, you're you're spending the least amount of money on on your data that you need. Because um, without these policies, like without this, if you were storing, you know, a hundred gigs, you know or let's, let's say a terabyte into hot storage and you never, you haven't touched it for a year. You know, if you had this set up for 30 days, you'd be paying a lot less money over that year. If you would have just had this set up and moved to a different storage. Um, so keep that in mind. And then you have a filter set. So you can set the filter set based on, you know, matching, matching a blob basically. So you can you see how it says container virtual folder. So you could have like we I don't know I can't remember what we had like foobar slash old files. So if we had that, we can um, we can actually match you know the file system if we wanted to. So so we could have the same container and then and then match just just portions of of that container. So let's review and add. And here's the prefix match, rule name, and all of that. All right. So now we have our life cycle policy set up. Snapshots. So you can also do snapshots of your data. So let's go back here. And let's go to Uh, what do you want to go to? Sorry, this I'm, I'm testing out the zoom on videos and I've got things very, it's very zoomed up in my, um, screen. <laughs> so going back and forth through things is, is, is tricky. All right, let's go back. Let's go to foobar. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you can see this. So usually when it's not zoomed, I have a, it's, it's, the snapshot is like here, but now it's actually collapses it to, you know, the dot, dot, dot menu. So interesting. Okay. So, so if we want to just like, if we like, we're at like a point in time, like, all right, like, yeah, we've got a lot, you know, our data is in a good spot. Let's just take a backup to make sure, you know, we can, we can take a, take a snapshot, you know, so we just create a snapshot. So that can be useful for certain things, but with a snapshot, you are going to, you are duplicating data. So you are going to pay that you know, extra cost and storage with a snapshot. Um, you also have things like lease and basically the, the acquire lease basically says you can, you can put a lease on just like, so, so on this blob. So like, see, see how it has a check mark and we can delete it, you know, so we could delete this blob if we wanted to, but if we put the acquire lease, it, it's kind of an extra prevention to, um, uh, not allow deletions. 
So now if we check it, you see how we can't delete it yet. We actually have to take off the lease um, to, to delete it. And this can actually prevent other people from deleting it as well. And then only the creator of that blob is allowed to uh, break the lease essentially. So it's a good way to make sure that things don't get deleted. Yeah, so, so that's the gist of, of storage blobs on everything. There's a couple things you can also do is you can use the Azure CLI to do some of this. Um, so let's see. So let's go to, here. I haven't gone over CLI in any of these videos, but if you're familiar with it at all, um, you can you can just use storage, uh, the CLI commands to, um, to do different things. Um, so storage account create, you know, your resource group, the name, and different things like that. So it can all be done through here. And then there's, um, the, and this is, the, the the CLI is good for, for smaller uploads and everything like that, or just creating storage accounts. But if you want to do a, a lot of um, multiple um, uploads or, or larger uploads, there's um, Azure AZ Copy as well. So you have, that you can use and download. Um, in addition to the CLI. So, so that's another thing you can do. And, and I'll make sure to put links in this in the description so you, so you guys have it. But, but that's, that's basically all I have for, for Blob Storage. Hopefully you are, have a little bit better understanding of, of anything storage. If you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to comment and let me know.